For the majority of us, the occasional desire to turn up the music is well understood, at least in the abstract. And I qualify the majority because someone will invariably question this experience the way you might question some weird foreign custom. That being said, if you've ever found yourself on either end of such dialogue, this video might be for you. So let's first establish that not everyone enjoys music. There is a National Academy of Sciences study that looks at the brain function of an estimated 3-5% to of the world's population affected by specific musical anhedonia. It's a legitimate condition characterized by limited neural activity between the brain's auditory and reward regions. Certain individuals simply cannot reconcile their own listening experience with that of someone getting those steady shots of dopamine anytime a beautiful piece of music comes on. So they're not trolling, they're not argument baiting, they're simply out of the sensory loop and curious, or as it also happens, resentful. However, even if this doesn't connect on a sensory level, it can still be explained sociologically and psychoacoustically. So, why do we enjoy the occasional surge of volume? asks one person in 20. I can think of at least two distinct sets of reasons, and for this we return to the Connex scale. Super useful, link to the introduction and the description. For those grouped along the exhibitionist end of the spectrum, the reasons are pretty straightforward. Self-disclosure. It's a way to get attention. For some, it's a form of in-group status signaling. It's certainly a way to communicate stylistic preferences. For others still, it's a courtship display. Although that motive is kind of implicit and almost universally downplayed. Anyhow, that's one side of the coin. For those grouped along the connoisseur end of the spectrum, things are a little more complicated. So let's first take a minute to talk about the fact that, just like any microphone, the human ear has a dynamic range, and that range is roughly 120 dB. That's 120 decibels between the faintest and the loudest sound that your ear can translate into a neural impulse. We can still sense acoustic energy well north of 120 decibels, though mostly as pressure on the body. And since what we're feeling corresponds directly to what we're hearing, the brain doesn't really put that much emphasis on where the additional sense data is coming from. It mostly just weighs out the combined intensity. The bottom line here is that a sound pressure level of 120 dB marks the upper threshold for usability if we're talking about a purely audible experience. And fittingly, this is what the majority of the connoisseurs converge on, some with more headroom than others, of course. On a side note, this also clarifies the utility of the big 150 plus decibel systems, the top 30 decibels of which will obviously not enhance the connoisseur's private listening experience, more on that in a minute, but is essential to the exhibitionist who's goal is to be heard. Everything has its place on the Connex scale. Now, is that to say that the connoisseurs don't turn their music up? They absolutely do, and here's my take on why. Let's say that this picture represents a piece of music, and the range of color from the darkest to the lightest represents our 120 decibel range from the faintest to the loudest. Notice that as we reduce the volume, or brightness, we narrow the range of color available to represent the image. Now with 60 decibels, or medium gray as the brightest, or the loudest element therein. And while we can still make out the general composition of the image, there's also a lot of detail missing from all but the lightest elements. So as a piece of music, this would be just audible enough for us to identify the foreground elements, such as the lead instrument or the vocal or the percussion, depending on the track. But the more recessed layers of sound, those containing the shimmering nuance would be all but lost. And that's just not acceptable to an active listener, such as the one characterized by the connoisseur archetype, hence the volume goes up and with it the ability to resolve finer dynamic detail. That's my best shot at an explanation anyhow. Though, while I have this graphic up, let's also talk about what happens if we keep raising the volume beyond the auditory ceiling. And as you can see, the louder we make the music relative to this threshold, the more of it is represented only by the lightest shades within that spectrum. So if the dynamic range of a painfully loud performance has ever struck you as somehow overexposed, your mental picture is actually spot on. Anyway, I hope you found this useful. I hope it made sense. Now, if someone questions you about the volume at which you listen to your music and they're genuinely curious to know, send them over to this video. And of course, if they're asking just to be a dick, definitely send them over to this video. Cheers.